I spent a lot of this summer, if not in Sticks and Bricks, then in my rig near Sticks and Bricks, helping my dad take care of my mom, who passed about a month ago now. So I'm slowly reimmersing myself in being on the road again full time, which is a very, very good thing. I've missed it a lot and I've missed the desert. The Pacific Northwest is a wonderful, beautiful place, but I'll be happy to be back there again in the spring when I'm tired of the desert. Getting back in touch with the essence of what being a nomad is all about, why we're out here, how we can create our own individual experience that feeds each of us in different ways. Everybody does it differently and it's so great to learn from other people about how they do things and how that can influence the way we do things to make it better. So if you're thinking about coming down to the desert in time for the RTRs in January or even before, I'm hoping this video will either remind you about the things that you might have forgotten since the last time you were in the desert, or if you've never been before, what, what you need to anticipate and plan for. I often see in Facebook groups people posting questions about just that and they're obviously not prepared and they haven't done their research. So please do yourself a favor and think about these things. And yes, I did get a haircut. This is pretty much how I looked five years ago when I crossed that line in my head that I was indeed going to become a nomad. And then got the idea from lots of YouTubers that growing out your hair was easier to take care of. I guess I didn't find that to be the case because the other day I just said, that's it, we're getting cut. So we did, and we'll see how long that lasts. It's been a while since I've been around the winds. That can be very, very strong for days and days at a time and to be around colder temperatures at night because it does get cold in the desert. It got down to about 31 where I am right now on my way down to Pahrump and getting practice again in those three, four, five blanket nights. One of the things that I do love about being in the desert is that quality of, sure it gets cold at night, but it heats up again during the day. You just get your layering thing on. and you're fine. Put them on in the morning, peel them off during the day, put them back on in the evening. Hopefully you've been practicing in your driveway or in the parks around your home so you understand what it is that you need in your setup for when the temperatures are between 35 and 25 degrees possibly. Something on your feet during the night that you wouldn't wear during the day. A hat that's gonna stay on, mittens, a heavy coat, and those layers that you'll want to be peeling off of you during the day as it gets warmer. Please don't put yourself in the position of not being warm enough. It doesn't take much planning, but it does take some. Another thing to get used to is decision fatigue. Every little thing that contributes to the success of your day as a nomad is consisting of decisions that you make about how far are you going to drive, if at all? Finding places to camp. For me in this new rig, those decisions are centering around staying places longer and fighting the propensity to want to just go, go, go and get somewhere. That is one of the hardest things to adjust to as a nomad and to just slow down and enjoy where you are and what you're doing now. Coming back down to the desert from wherever we scattered during the summer, or if you're in sticks and bricks and still checking out this lifestyle, you're probably in parts of the country that are a little cooler right now and you need to pay attention to temperatures and weather movement, getting used to using weather apps again and checking more often than just in the morning and just at night because developments can happen during the day that will catch you by surprise. You don't want to have to deal with that. Depending on the elevation of where you are and where you're going, that's going to significantly impact the temperature and you'll have to make decisions based on that. 
For me, I don't do very well in temps above 80. I'm closely watching the drop in temperature that's going to be happening in Pahrump about three, four, five days from now. And very excited to get back down there. So I am about three or four days out from Pahrump and looking at the weather apps and on iOverlander to see places that I might stay. I'm noticing that T-Mobile may be an issue for where I wanted to go tonight. And also, why should I leave where I am today? It's perfectly fine and there's really interesting things to see here. I wanted to work on this video and I wouldn't have been able to do that if I followed my lizard brain instincts of go 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 and get somewhere. Yes, it might have been nice to have no connectivity and just unplug completely, but I really did want to make this. I also had a meeting scheduled tomorrow and I didn't want to take the chance that I would have to reschedule it. I wanted to get it done and then be able to more fully embrace being on the road without that on the back of my mind. So I changed my plans that I'd made last night, jello plans, about taking off today and making it to a place that I wanted to go, and I'll do that tomorrow. And that's based on my own personal version of the 333 rule, where I try to drive only two to three hours a day. So based on those segments, getting to Pahrump will take about that long. The other threes are getting to my final destination at least three hours before sunset. If you're boondocking and you arrive in the dark, fill in the blank about how much trouble you can get yourself into. And the other three is, what is it? Ah, having a plan A, plan B, and plan C for my destination or near my destination. I'll scope out some spots on iOverlander, freecampsites.net, Campendium. I'll save those possible locations in Google Maps as pins inside a folder that I'll create for each purpose, each season, whatever makes sense to my brain about how I remember things that are categorized. When I get there, I'll check those out and trust my vibometer about where I feel safe and that's where I'll stay. I'm also paying attention to where gas stations are. When you're traveling in the southwest there can be hours at a time where there are no services and you'll see signs that tell you that. So that's another decision that you need to keep track of in your brain because you don't want to run out of gas. I'm already missing access to types of grocery stores that carry the food that I like to eat. Predominantly organic produce. You're gonna have to think about that, especially in Quartzsite. Prump does have Walmart, Albertsons, and Smiths. It's actually quite a cornucopia of food for whatever type of diet that you have yourself on. Quartzsite is a different matter. There are smaller markets and family dollars type stores where you can pick up food. I wouldn't necessarily eat it, but that's just me. There are places around Quartzsite that have more options that are less expensive. You need to make that decision about paying for the gas to go those places having the solar capacity to run a refrigerator or buy ice for coolers to have food with you for several days in a row before needing to restock. And I get it, paying more for groceries is a pain, but it's part of being in the desert. It's quartzite. They need to make their money during this small amount of time when there's so many people around, there's gonna be lines in the stores, in the restaurants. So again, it's part of the checklist that you need to have in your head and be prepared for. And let's be kind to those workers who have to deal with literally the hundreds of thousands of us who descend on that small community for that period of time in the winter.